I'm going to start the uh, the software, so I'll just use version uh, 18. So it's the same way regardless of the version that uh, you're using. So here I'll go to uh, to Workbench. Okay, so most of you hopefully are using version 18 or uh, or above. If you're not, don't worry, uh, don't worry too much about it. It's the same. Uh, this, like I said, it's the same process to uh, to start. All right. So on the side here, we've got. Uh, basically what we call our uh, analysis systems. So you might not see all of the same things that I'm seeing here. Uh, a lot of this is, uh, is license, uh, license dependent. So basically the, uh, the ones that have got a blue icon are used for CFD or computational fluid dynamics. The ones that are green are basically uh, the structural FEA type analyses. The ones that are red are for thermal uh, thermal simulations, and then there's uh, I think there's uh, an orange one as well. So they're for solving for electrical uh, or uh, EMAG uh, analysis. So I'm going to go down to the component systems. So the idea is that you either drag and drop, so you've got to drop it into what we call a drop target, or you can simply double click, and then that brings up um, the component into the uh, into the project uh, project schematic. So here on geometry, if I right click and then wait for the menu to show up, here I'm going to say new space claim geometry. So there's also design modeler. So there's basically two ways you can create uh, create geometry. So I'm going to use a uh, space claim. Okay, so this is just starting uh, starting up. It takes a little while the first time you start it. Okay, so uh, so here this is a space claim. So there's uh, different uh, different tabs uh, along the uh, along the top. Uh, so they're for different uh, different things. So we'll see what uh, what some of these are um, what some of these are shortly. But most of the work we do is in the uh, in the design uh, design tab. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to create a, a space frame, uh, basically using uh, from scratch. So you can, of course, uh, begin with a, a CAD model and bring it into Space Claim, or in some cases you might just use your CAD model to do whatever it is you're uh, you're going to do. So here, under the, if I hold my mouse over each one of these, you can see how it's got a. Um, it tells me what the uh, what the shortcut is. So there's three different modes. So there's either 3D mode, section mode, or uh, or sketch mode. So what we want to do is we want to start in uh, sketch mode. Okay. So because I switched out of default mode, I have to tell it which plane I want to uh, I want to sketch on. So I'm going to start with a, a rectangle. So I left click to start the rectangle. So then if I press the tab key, I can key in my uh, my dimensions. So because space claim is what we call a uh, a direct modeler, there's no there's no feature tree on the side here in the structure. So I don't want to drag my mouse too much. So I'll, I'll just leave that rectangle there. I've just got to refer to my notes for what dimensions I need to uh, I need to put. 
Okay, so this is going to be uh, the start of the uh, of the space frame. So, oops, I want it to be 500, and then if I press tab, uh, and then the other dimension is 350. So then once I press enter, then that uh, that commits my um, uh, my sketch. So I'm going to do a, another rectangle. So I can just drag to position it so it's not always going to be very precise. So it does snap to the uh, to the grid. So the next one is going to be 750 by 350. Okay, so I'm going to do another rectangle. This one is going to be 500. So I'm just pressing tab to switch between the dimensions. And then finally another one. So this one I'll make 200. So if I tab, I can also uh, I'll type it in rather than relying on the snap. Here's my mouse is wandering all over the place. Okay, so I've got my uh, base of my uh, of my sketch uh, complete. Okay, so. We'll just show you some of the other uh, cool tools in here. So, so at the moment this is a sketch, so you'll notice it's just got curves. There's nothing in here that's got the uh, dimensions. So what if I want to edit or move some of these sketch points around? Okay, very easy to do. So if I press on the, uh, the move, So if I select that vertex, I select the direction I want to move it in, I press the space bar, and then I can put in a, a dimension that I want to move it. So you can see I've stretched that, uh, that position there. So because this is a, um, a space frame, I want it to be sort of wider at this sort of uh, intermediate bulkhead. So I'm just sort of uh, moving those sketch points. Okay, so again, I, I'm still in the move, so I click the direction, press the space bar to bring up the dimension box, and then uh, enter to, uh, to complete that, uh, that move. Okay, so I'm going to do the same at the, um, at, the, at the rear. So just press escape to get off that vertex. Oops. Okay, so here I've got to choose a direction. So here this is, if you like, the extra steps that I've got to follow in this, uh, in this move. So here if I say move direction, so I press the axis space bar, so here I've got to go minus 150. Okay, so so here the uh, axis is properly aligned. I select the direction, space bar, and 150. Okay, so that completes my um, my sketch. So now if I switch to 3D mode, you'll notice it's created these patches or these uh, these surfaces. So before I had curves, now I've got uh, I've got surfaces. So again, there's no feature history here. It's just uh, if you like, it's progressing the model as I um, as I do uh, extra uh, extra things. So now what I'm going to do, I'm basically going to create, if you like, a um, uh, a solid that I'm going to use to create my frame around and then I later on I'll get rid of the uh, get rid of the solid so here if I click on sorry let me press escape a few times so if I click on the surface and I say pull 
so it automatically pulls in the uh, in the normal uh, normal direction. So here, if I press the space bar, I can put in the dimension that I want to uh, I want to pull by. So here, I'm going to go by 350 millimeters. So you can see it's created a uh, created a cube. Okay, so I press escape twice. So here, I want to pull again. Okay, so here I want to pull this, but I want to create a separate uh, a separate solid. So here in the options, which I'm sort of moving my mouse around in the middle of the uh, left hand uh, area of the window, if I say no merge, so you can see it stays highlighted. So here I um, I can press the space bar and then say 350. So you notice it's created a, a second uh, a second solid. Okay, so here again it's still got no merge highlighted. So here I'm going to say up to that face. So it's created a a third uh, a third solid there. Okay, so I continue doing that until I create all of my uh, all of my solids. So I'll just do the last one now. Still on no merge, and if I just say up to, and now there's a fourth solid. So you'll notice that the surfaces progressively disappeared as I did that um, that pulling. So I've got uh, the start of my uh, of my geometry created now. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to I'm going to grow this uh, this middle section here. So here I will. Um, so I'll. Uh, so it's, it's still in pull. So I press the space bar, and I've gone up by uh, by four hundred uh, millimeters. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to angle this section in over here. So what I do is I select the face, and I'm going to go to uh, to sketch mode. Okay, so it's automatically done a cross section through that uh, that plane, allowing me to uh, to create a sketch uh, sketch on there. So what I need to do is create two angled uh, angled lines here. So if I select line, so you notice it automatically defaults to angle. So if I press the tab, oops, let me undo that. So Control Z un does the undo. So I want it to be 60 degrees. So you can see it sort of um, it's happily sort of snapping to that. So escape because I want to do a line from the other side. So I just did a tab and then typed in 60. Oops, I didn't do that. Let me try that again. All right, so 30 degrees is what I want because it's 60 the other side. And then I just press escape. Okay, so now if I switch back to 3D mode, you notice how it's got an imprint or it's sort of split those faces. So what I can do now, or before I do that, um, so what I want to do is I want to join these two bodies at the back. So here if I use combine, Hold control, those two bodies are now joined into one. So just press escape twice. So now that's, uh, that body at the back is, uh, is combined. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to use these two faces here. 
or I want to, if I pull that face, so you notice as I pull it, it's cutting material away. So it automatically knows that that's what I want to do, but if I pull the other way, it adds extra material. So here I just want to pull, so I continue pulling until it cuts all the way through. Okay, so I'll pull that uh, over there as well. All right, so uh, so the combine then uh, um, pull. So these are two of uh, the, the main tools that uh, you use. So the other one that we can make a lot of use of is the uh, is the move. Okay, so and you'll notice that's all fused into uh, into one solid now as well. So you just need to be careful if that's not what you want to do, and it isn't. So let me just go back. So if I say no merge, and just pull those two again. So you've got to sometimes keep your eye on the um, on the on the tree here to make sure that you're not sort of fusing solids together accidentally. Okay, so next thing I want to do, I want to basically move this edge in, and what that will do is it will angle that uh, that back face. So if I press the axis for the direction I want to move, and I want to move that by minus 300, so you can see it's angled that uh, that face uh, that face there. So you can sort of see this is starting to resemble, um, if we started draping lines around it, it would, it's starting to resemble a, um, uh, it's going to resemble a, a chassis. Okay, so press escape twice because I don't want to do any more moves. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to create an arc on this, uh, around this face here, or around this front. So I click on the face and go to sketch mode. So you'll notice it's uh, sort of uh, made the back transparent. So here I want to do a um, an arc. Or a, uh, a three-point uh, three point arc. So here I select the start. the end and I want to have it so it's 90 degrees or the arc is 90 degrees. So once I'm happy with that I click to uh, to place it. Okay so next thing I want to do I want to create a uh, another uh, section in the uh, in the middle. So if I go to 3D mode so if I want to select a hidden face, I hold control down and I scroll with my mouse wheel. So if I look from the front, as I hold, as I scroll with the uh, control and the mouse wheel, that's what I want to select. So I left click to select that face and then I go to, uh, to sketch mode. Okay, so here I want to create some uh, some vertical lines. So 90 degrees and 30 millimeters high. The same for the other side. And then I want to do another uh, another arc. So this time I want to use the Endpoints. Okay, and that's another uh, another arc, uh, another arc there. So I switch to 3D mode now. So you notice it's created those two uh, two surfaces, uh, two surfaces there. So now this is, if you like, it's got the uh, the skeleton if you like, for me uh, wanting to create the, uh, the beams. Okay, so if we go to the Prepare tab, 
So here this is in the uh, this sort of section here with the beams. This is where we uh, we create our uh, our beams. So first thing we need to do is we need to create a uh, a profile. Okay, so here I'll click a circular tube. So that adds a, uh, a beam profile here. So it's got my uh, my circular tube. So here this has got some default properties. So what I want to do is I want to edit that beam profile. Okay, so here it's uh, got uh, some fairly uh, it's a fairly thick wall tube. That's not what we uh, what we want. So here I'll modify the uh, inner radius. So here I just click until I get access to that dimension. So I'll make it eight inner radius and ten for the outer radius. Okay, so once I'm happy with that beam profile, I can then close the beam profile tab. Okay, so now, uh, so you can see it's showing that because that's my only profile. Um, okay, so now what I want to do is I want to create my um, my beam profile. So here, if I say create. So I can either do two points or I can uh, select uh, select edges. So I essentially want to select all of the uh, all of the edges uh, around. Okay, so well not all of them. There's some that I want to uh, want to exclude. Okay, so I just start clicking the uh, edges. So you'll notice they're sort of changing to a, uh, a bold colour. Okay, so if it wasn't for the two uh, edges that I didn't uh, didn't need. I could have just did a uh, a blanket uh, select. Okay, so just bear with me while I click these. Oops. Okay, so I'll show you a, uh, a way to confirm that we've got all these in a in a second. Okay, so if I click on display and then say solid beams, let me turn off these solids. Oops, so I've missed one there. And another couple on the bottom. Okay, so I can turn off the uh, solids there and let me turn off these surfaces as well. 
Okay, so I've got the uh, the beginnings of my uh, of my space frame. So now to create the uh, the diagonals. So here it's still in uh, in creation mode. So here if I just go between two points. So let me create. You just got to be careful you don't accidentally do the wrong uh, links. So I pressed escape then. So just do create. Okay, so where else should I put one? Okay, so I mean you can put you can put more, but it just it's just to uh, to demonstrate. Okay, so now if I um. Go back to the design tab. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to create um, create some surface skins on here. All right. So what what, what I'll do is I'll select. Sorry. Direct to design tab. So I essentially want to uh, project the sketch onto the, uh, the the beams on here. Oops. So if I select that loop, and if I project onto the sketch, now if I select that loop and then switch to 3D mode, it creates a, uh, a surface. Okay, so if I do the same thing on the other side. So select the edges, project to sketch. Select my loop and then switch to 3D mode it creates a, uh, a surface. So you can sort of continue doing that to create the um, the other skin. So I'll just do the, uh, the bulkhead. So I project the sketch and then Select my enclosed loop and then switch to uh, to 3D mode. So that's uh, that's created, and then there's just one more to uh, to create. Okay, project to sketch. Okay, so you need to individually click. And then switch to uh, to 3D mode. Okay, and then I might do the bottom, but it's the same uh, the same process to create that uh, that geometry. Okay, so that's that's basically how you uh, how you create a um, a geometry from uh, from scratch. Okay, so let me go back to the project page. All right, so what I'll do now is I'll show you 
if you if you start with a uh, with a CAD geometry, so sorry, let me not do it that way. All right, so if we have, all right, so here we go. So, so this is a uh, basically a space frame with some other uh, other bits uh, in it. So here, if I edit this geometry in uh, in space claim. So what I did there was I dragged and dropped the geometry from uh, Windows Explorer onto the project schematic and uh, basically opened it in, uh, in Space Claim. So you can also open Space Claim standalone or without any geometry and then just drag and drop your, uh, your geometry into the workspace. So I can bring in another geometry on top of here as well by, uh, by using that, uh, that method. Or here I can just go to file, um, open, and then that will open the uh, the geometry. All right, so you can see this is a. Um, basically a space frame with some suspension arms and uh, suspension rockers, rims, uprights and uh, wheels and tyres. So the parts we're interested in are the, uh, is basically the what comprises the, uh, the space frame. So most of the time these parts are uh, colour color coded. Okay, so here we've got a, so if I single click, it selects a, a face. If I double click, it uh, does like a, a flood select, so it's not really showing well on there. So if I click on the rim, if I single click, selects a face. No, not working well there either. Okay. So essentially there's single click, sorry, single click selects an edge. Not there either. Okay. So if you triple click, it selects the uh, the body. So essentially, what I want to do, I want to isolate the three subsections of the uh, of the space frame. Okay. So here, what I want to do is I want to locate in structure tree. Okay, so it looks like they're, uh, they're scattered. So what I want to do is I want to right click, move them to a new component. So what that then allows me to do, I can then open that component. So that opens it up in a separate, uh, a separate tab. All right, so because this is a, um, a space frame, it's probably one unit, you know, when it's constructed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine all three of these solids into one, uh, one solid. Okay, so you can see here it's uh, one solid, so it's retained the, um, the colouring because that was possibly on the, on the faces. Okay, so you can see that it, uh, apart from these little uh, cross tubes, it's, uh, it's mostly a, a tubular, uh, tubular structure. Uh, so I'm not sure what, uh, what chassis uh, you guys are using, so some teams use monocoques uh, made of carbon fibre, other teams um, use, uh, use a space frame. So when we uh, want to analyse this in, uh, uh, for structural loads or if you wanted to do a simple um, uh, torsion test to see what the torsional, uh, torsional stiffness is, modelling it with, uh, with solid elements is probably going uh, way over the top. 
So what we uh, what we we would traditionally do is model it with uh, with line elements. But when you're creating your CAD model, you don't create it as lines. You create it as a solid. So what can we do to uh, to bridge the gap between uh, your solid model and what you really need for FEA? So inside space claim on the prepare tab. So there's a, a beam extraction tool. So here what this will do is it will convert a 3D structure into a, a 1D structure where it's only got uh, lines and then those lines have cross sections assigned. So like we did with the geometry creation where we created lines and assigned a cross section, here we're going the opposite way. We're taking a cross section and converting it to a line and then the line automatically has the cross section assigned. Okay, so here if I say extract, I just click on the whole body. So it goes away and extracts the, uh, the beams. Okay, so it's not just a single click. Um, there's a little bit of a uh, cleanup we have to do um, afterwards. Um, depending on how the model is constructed, sometimes it will work with just one click, but it's I haven't uh, haven't seen it do it for um, structures of any um, any sort of uh, level of complexity or level of great complexity, I should say. Okay, so you can see it's extracted the uh, the beam. So if I zoom in, you can see the model isn't uh, isn't quite uh, quite connected. So because those beams stop short because it's got the uh, the fish mouth to uh, to join them, it doesn't quite know what to do uh, with that uh, where it's got that end. So you can see there's a whole heap of little. Um, uh, little things here, little beams. So what we're going to do, so I'm just pressing escape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these uh, these small beams. So here I'm going to use selection. So I'm finding all the beams are the same size and then I'm deleting them. So same size. Same size. So because they're not really going to contribute anything to the structure, it's safe to, uh, to get rid of them. Okay, same size. Okay, let me just show the uh, solid beams. Okay, let me use same profile that will probably get more of them. Oops, that just deleted the profile, not the not the body. Okay, my mistake, same size. Same size, delete. Okay, so it looks like I got 
most of them, and then these ones. All right. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to get rid of these uh, these gaps. So there's a uh, a good tool here. So connect. So by default, so that distance is not going to be enough. So before I do that, let me measure a typical uh, typical distance. So here, if I go to the measure, so if I hold control and then measure between two vertices, so there's a distance there of just over 22 millimeters. So if I go back to the prepare, connect, so probably 30 millimeters will do it. Okay, so I just click near these. Okay, so you've sometimes got to be careful with um, with how you join these. Oops. Okay, so All right, so if we zoom out it looks like so let me turn on the solid just to compare so if I switch that off looks like we've missed uh, these two members that or a few members that look like they've been missed Okay, so let's turn off the, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to design. So here I'm going to sketch in, in 3D. So I did line and then I switched to 3D mode. Okay, I won't worry about those ones there for the moment. All right, so now that I've got those lines, those lines now need to have a cross-section assigned. So if I click on the edge and I go to Profiles, oh, which profiles which? Okay, so I'll take a guess and then turn on the solid beam so it looks like that's correct okay and then assign it as extracted profile okay so now because that's all in one structure okay well, there's one more step we need to uh, we need to do all right so let me turn off the Turn it to wire beams. So if we go to the prepare tab and we say show show contact. Oops, it's slightly different. 
Okay, sorry if I say share topology and at the moment it's set to none. If I say share, so you notice now it's got these blue dots everywhere uh, and red dots as well. So anywhere there's a red dot, it's essentially a free hanging uh, end. Uh, anywhere there's a blue dot, it means that there's two or more beams being connected. So you can see at all of the uh, the structural uh, nodes or the structural connections where you've got multiple members coming together. As I say that I've noticed another member that's missing that's fairly important. So let me just quickly use my join the dots. Okay, so I'll show you how we can join this in. So now if I go to prepare, assign it extracted profile, so because it's still in the same component, I go to show contact, you can see it's, uh, it's joined in. And you can show the, uh, the solid beams uh, on there uh, as well. Okay, so that um, that sort of shows how that's all uh, all connected. Okay, so if I now, so you notice one thing, other thing that's really important. So whenever you do an extraction or you convert a model from, say, a solid to a, uh, a surface or a solid to a, a beam, it automatically hides and it also uh, does what we call or it suppresses the um, the base solid so because you're going to do a uh, you might be doing a structural analysis on uh, on this uh, structure you don't want to have the solid coming through coming through as well so if I close the component so you notice now it's it's turned that back on so what I want to do is I want to right click suppress for physics. If you've got an earlier version than version uh, 18, simply hiding that body will stop it from uh, from coming through. So what I want to do is I want to basically select everything here and right click suppress for physics. Or if I was doing it in an earlier version I just untick the box and it hides them. So let me just undo that. So right click suppress for physics and I also want to hide them because I don't want to uh, don't want to see them. Okay, so and I hide that. Okay, and if I turn on my solid beams, that's all that's going to be taken to my um to my FEA uh, FEA simulation. Okay, so there's one uh, one last thing I want to show with the uh, with the geometry. So if I go back to the project. So here, this is basically a um, a plate uh, a plate structure that I'm going to convert into a um, into a surface or a, uh, a shell uh, structure. Okay, so if I sort of zoom in and if I click on an edge, down the bottom here it tells me what that uh, what that edge uh, edge length is. Okay, so there's some parts that I can't measure, but it's probably going to be around the um, 30 millimeter mark for how uh, how thick it uh, it is. Okay, so under the prepare. So, so this is for beams, and then there's another one here for um, 
uh, analysis. So this is for creating models that are ready for um, for doing our our simulation. So here, what I want to choose is the mid surface. So I want to use a range of let's say zero to thirty-two. I press enter, so if I just do a box around everything, okay, so it changes the colour of the uh, of the solids. So as long as all of them have got this sort of uh, green and sort of uh, bluey green colour, that's telling me it's picked up um, two faces of the solid that can be collapsed to a uh, to a surface representation. Okay, so if I click, so you'll notice it's turned off all the uh, the solids, and now I've got these uh, these surfaces. Okay, and these surfaces have a, uh, a thickness. So you notice here it's got a thickness property. Um, so it's got it in the name as well. So these, because we're, we've taken a, uh, an existing solid and we've converted it to a surface, that surface has to have a property if it's going to be properly represented when we do our, um, our finite element uh, simulation. Okay, so that's basically another, um, another sort of defeaturing that we can, we use. All right, so if I wanted to change this surface model now, so this is another cool thing we can do. So if I wanted to make that bigger or smaller, I just press P for pull. So I can totally close that up too if I wanted to. So let me just undo that because I don't want to modify it. Um, so yeah, that's... Uh, something you uh, you can do. So if you if you did a um, a simulation and you found that this structure was too weak, so rather than going back, changing the solid model, coming back, doing the mid surface extraction again, you can just modify the um, uh, modify the the surface model that we've got uh, we've got here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause sharing the screen. Uh...